When local crook Johnny Amato hatches a plan to rob a card game run by mob lackey Marky, he picks a low-rent thug named Frankie to do the job. Frankie picks a less-than-ideal partner to help him, but despite their combined incompetence, they manage to make off of the mob's money. In retaliation, Marky's bosses hire Jackie Kogan, a mob enforcer, to eradicate those responsible. Welcome to another feature presentation of Midnight Double Feature, and on this episode, we'll be covering 2012's Killing Them Softly, directed by Andrew Dominic. This morning, got yourself a good... Uh, hi, everybody. Sorry, I have, have Sopranos on the brain. Uh, here we are, me and Zoheb covering Killing Them Softly. How you doing, buddy? Hey, man, I'm good. How are you? I'm a little stuffy. We were talking off air. Uh, I apologize in advance to listeners. I, uh, we I got thought. a bad sinus... Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, I got a bad sinus infection. Um, you know, and honestly, I sound great compared to how I did. So just fucking take it because I'm, hey, I'm giving you my best here, dude. I'm so hopped up on antihistamines and uh, meth. But, anyways, uh, guys, thanks for checking out the show. If you've. <laughs> <laughs> That caught me. That caught me so off guard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if this is your first time uh, checking out the show, thanks a lot for listening. Uh, we are going to spoil this movie. We're not going to go through it exactly scene by scene, but we'll start from the beginning, go all the way to the end. Might take a break in the middle. Uh, check us out on our socials. Uh, Facebook's going to be at Midnight Double Feature. We have a group attached to that called the After Party. You can find us on Twitter at MDF Pod or on Instagram at Midnight Double Feature. Check out our Patreon. It's going to be patreon.com slash Midnight Double Feature. It's called The Green Room. It's five bucks a month. We're almost up to 50 episodes so far. So you sign up. Dude, that's like ugh, we will 50, be up episodes, to 50 episodes by the end of this. Yeah, by the time this episode drops, yeah. um, we will have recorded our chef episode and it will have been released. So. Yeah, fifty episodes Crazy. on the on the green room Crazy. feed, man. Like that is that is insane. Like in yeah. insane. I, I can't, can't imagine um, the the low quality of some of those. Uh, right. <laughs> Dude, some of those we just banged out and we're like, oh, let's fucking do oh, this. God. <laughs> man, I'm so hungover. Um but no, again, that's called the Green Room. It's five dollars a month for everybody. There's only one tier. You get two extra episodes a month. Uh, and again, that's patreon.com slash midnight double feature. And you can find all the stuff at midnight double feature.com. We have the links to everything in our sh- uh, show. We have merch, we have written reviews, we have little bios about us and stuff. So you can check that out at midnight double feature.com. But with that all out of the way, so I'm killing them softly. Uh Sopranos Junior. I like to call this. I, I like to. I like to call this set and the David Chase the 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 DCU uh, as I like to call it, the David Chase universe. Um, what did you think of this movie? Had you have you seen this before? Is this your first time seeing it? Yeah. Uh, well, no, I have seen this before. Um, and I I really I really dig this movie. Um, I think yeah, you're 100 percent on the money. It's a great companion piece to The Sopranos, especially in The Sopranos. We're given an introduction to how you know, these card games work and the structure of the mafia or the families um, and, like, how the orders come down from, you know, right to the top to the hitman to the enforcers, whatever. Um, and then you have the low-level guys who are just kind of, like, caught up in wheeling and dealing. Um, but, yeah, like, this is, like, you know, The Sopranos was just such a great introduction, especially, like, you know, those episodes where Chris Moltisanti is, like, you know, uh, like, in charge of those uh, poker games, right? And then, you know, you got Robert Patrick who's getting himself in too deep and, you know, he ends up... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to spoil, oh, don't yeah. spoil too much. But um, that, that those episodes were some of my favorite episodes of The Sopranos. Just watching this guy get in too deep uh, and, you know, having to owe Tony Soprano. And, you know, Robert Patrick is Tony Soprano's friend in that show and... Patrick's like, oh, yeah, it's okay. He's my friend. Don't worry about it. He'll let me slide. And, you know, Tony Soprano being yeah. Tony Soprano. Uh, yeah. It, it, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's just, if you if, if you have not seen The Sopranos, do not let the fact that it is a bit of an older show steer you, or, steer you away because it is it is absolutely incredible. I mean, like, the storytelling it's pretty is timeless. absolutely yeah. timeless. Yeah. Um, but I think you're... 100% right. This is absolutely a great companion piece. Not only do you have Gandolfini as well, but you have Johnny Sack <laughs> as well. Yeah. Um, a Vincent couple Grittoli, other actors yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
But like, man, like this this movie is a tight ninety minutes. <laughs> um, it's, Hell it's yes! A, it, it it it's just you know in and out. Um, it has a point, and it has something to say. Um, you know, we can talk about that. You know, about American capitalism and the fall of the housing, uh, the fall the fall of the housing um, crisis and the. The bubble and you know how incoming presidents deal with uh, particular issues and things like that, um, but you know the the movie is it's taking those issues and it's kind of like telling them on this ground level of like organized crime and seeing like how even something like the housing bubble affects people like. Um, our two, uh, our two criminals who who knock over the thing, you know, like who knock over the the, the poker game. So it's just like, it's really interesting how people, um, you know, you, you've got Gandolfini's character who has a job, right? I mean, like in this economy, he has a job, but like he doesn't give a fuck about any money, you know. He's just he just right. wants to get loaded and he just wants to fuck hookers, and he doesn't really give a shit about doing his job. Whereas other people are like. In this time, we know from history, I like, man, I need a fucking job. I need a second job. I need a third job to keep my family afloat. So it's like, yeah. it's really, it's really interesting how this story is told, and <clears throat> how people go about doing their jobs. Literally, the last line of the movie is, "Pay me my fucking money." Yeah. <laughs> so I can't wait to talk about this movie. I think Andrew Dominic is an incredible director. He's currently directing. Uh, a movie that's kind of got um, quite a bit of uh, buzz called Blonde. It's about uh, Marilyn Monroe, um, starring Anna, Anna oh, Diaz okay, yeah. from Blade Runner. Yeah, um, it's going to be rated M- NC seventeen for some reason. It's for Netflix. <laughs> oh wow! Um, yeah, and uh, Dominic has done another movie that's actually very much in the Australian culture, very much in the Australian zeitgeist. It's been around forever. Um, called Chopper about Chopper Reed, um, starring Eric Banner. Oh, with Eric um, Banner. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah, see yeah. that. That looks yeah, good. Yeah, it's it's wild. It's a wild movie. Every Australian knows this movie. Every Australian's seen this movie. Every Australian can reference this movie. <laughs> um, it is an infamous Australian movie. Um, uh, but Dominic, uh, I think, grew up, was born and raised in New Zealand, so that's interesting. Um, the cast in this movie is absolutely Jesus. insane. I mean. Yeah. Ooh. So, uh, like I said, I had seen it, um, and I watched it at the theater in 2012. I remember walking in, and in the other auditorium, I could hear Dread playing, and I wanted to go and watch Dread oh, again because cool. I remember it being so good. <laughs> um, but um, I remember going in, and I was like, "All right, Brad Pitt's the only person that I know in this movie." But I had seen Ben Mendelsohn in another Australian movie called Animal Kingdom. Um, you know, this is now spun off into its own American TV show. I think it's on like four or five seasons, but, um, that is, uh, an Australian movie, the original one, and it's got Ben Mendelsohn. It's got Joel Edgerton. It's pretty fucking good. Um, obviously Richard Jenkins is a friend of the podcast. <laughs> I want to say by now. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, um, the, the late great James Gandolfini, the late great Ray Liotta, man. Like, I mean, yeah. Is this this is his world, man? Like this is his this is his bread and butter. I mean, you know, we can talk about Goodfellas, but like the whole kind of like I'm 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 not the rat. I'm not. I don't know who he is. I don't know. I don't know who knocked it over. Like he's just so good in this movie. You know, the limited screen time oh, that he's given. Man. <clears throat> it's so fucking good. Um, uh, yeah, please. Yeah, he's on. he's definitely got he's definitely got that kind of like. I don't know. Like, I feel like this this role is like tailor made to his specific. Like, that was all of my money, Karen. Yes. You know that that yes. feels that the manic, he's got this like manic. Em- yeah. Yes, he's got this sense of emergency, like fucking constantly, dude. It's right. it's great. Yeah, it really makes you sit on the edge of your seat. Um. Uh. So the last person I want to mention is Scoot McNary, who is the other uh, robber with um. With Ben Mendelsohn, he's been in a few things like Gone Girl and stuff like that. Um, Scoot, not Scott, which is crazy. Yeah, wild, huh? Um, I remember first time watching this, kind of being disappointed because I didn't know that this is a story or the structure of the story that I was going to get. Um, you know, it's just basically like, oh, they rob they rob a card game, and you know, the mafia gets their revenge. That's it. 
but it, you know, yeah, it's re- not, it, there's not a lot of flair to it. Yeah, right. But I mean, on a rewatch, there's a lot. There's so much more happening than that. I, I think, and I remember being very disappointed that Brad Pitt shows up like really, what 20, 20 minutes in to thirty minutes in, something like that. It's insane. Like yeah, yeah, you, something like you've that. got this. Yeah, you've got this A list star who's like. On the posters, on the trailers, and it's just like, oh, where the fuck is he? Why am I watching these two guys? Just you know, like I don't understand. Um, but uh, I just finally, before we do get to your thoughts, um, man, oh man, I love this cinematographer, Greg Fraser. He's an Australian. He just did the Batman. He won an Oscar for Dune. Um, he is oh cool, good for he him. He is fucking <laughs> killing it right now, man. So yeah, uh, this this movie. This movie also looks really gorgeous, man. Like it's a gorgeous looking movie. Um, I, I will never forget the moment when Ray Liotta is killed. Like, I mean, I remember that very vividly. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, uh, I I'm glad you picked this because because I think this is a fucking banger of a movie, man. Well done. Hell yeah, uh, yeah. So I honestly uh, I had never seen this movie before. I watched the first ah, half hour of it. Nice. I fell asleep 30 minutes into it and was like, <laughs> I don't care what the rest of this movie is. I've got to talk about it. It's the the first scene with Ben Mendelsohn and Scooty, Scooty McScooterson and uh, Johnny Sack was like, dude, this is this dirty crime office. These fucking files everywhere. Like I was immediately sucked into this world. And I think that's one thing that like it's a <clears throat> it's a very good movie. It comes close to being great. But it's almost too lean, you know. It all it almost leaves, you know. There's 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 bits where the movie does a great job of like sh- of of showing you a world and not really getting into it, you know. Like when Vincent Curatola is explaining to Frankie, he's like, "Yeah, you remember Doc? You remember about seven years ago I had that job?" And he's like, "Ah, oh, come on, don't talk about Doc. I knew him, you know." And a character we will never hear from again or see, and. It's really crazy that it really drops you into that world, but doesn't bother, you know, trying to walk you in with any kind of tutorial. And I really liked that. But at the same time, there were times where it was like, man, you know, this is definitely a subtitle movie. Like, I definitely have to turn subtitles on because like it's yes, it's it does a lot of uh, there, there's a lot. The sound design is so good. And that's kind of what made me go, OK, like I'm paying attention to like the sounds all around me and I'm not really listening to like the words that are being said. And there's a lot in the words. There's a lot of shit that's going on that you kind of have to infer or you kind of have to make assumptions about and figure out later on kind of thing. Um, you know, and, and you know, it's funny because I don't, if you ask me, you're like, man, what do you think killing them softly is really about? Um, <clears throat> I don't really know. You know, I don't really have like on surface level it's just a cool story about a guy getting some money back from the mob you could say it's about um you know uh, a democratic president taking over eight years after a republican one you could say it's about the housing market you could say it's about capitalism um obviously i think it's trying to say a lot of different things about a lot of different a lot of different things about a lot of different subjects that are huge subjects to try to to try to tackle and they're generally not subjects that i get very interested in talking about a podcast. I don't want to talk about politics and capitalism and the fall of the America. Blah, blah, blah. I don't want to. I just, this is a great fucking movie, um, regardless of whatever the subject matter is or how it's interpreted visually. It's unbelievably striking. The sound design is, a, is a beast. The sound design is some of the best sound design I've heard in a movie lately. It is just unbelievably good. Dude, the um, sound, again, like, the sound of the shotgun as, as, um, Brad Pitt is like leaning up against the hood of the car sorry the roof of the car as he shoots down johnny sack it sounds like yeah. an actual like, like a like a shotgun blast it doesn't sound like a stock effect noise you know dude and when, when that guy's like, this my fucking block and he just yeah. runs and like i was like dude i just the whole sound is great uh the performances the the soundtrack choices were just unbelievably good um I think Ben Mendelsohn is probably the best part of this movie. He's so um, fucking good, man. He's so fucking I, good. I, I like. I think that. I think that Scoot has some great moments, but all mm. like, especially at the beginning when he was like, "So I go down with a parole officer," and I was like, "Okay, dude, what are you doing, man?" And it's like you, you're the, you are the odd duck out in this whole fight. The Australian guy 
makes more sense than you do. Yeah. And and like I could I literally there were times where I was like, I don't know if he's trying to make a character choice, if that's how he actually talks. I didn't bother like listening to interviews or anything with him. And but he has the moment where he's conveying emotion, he's unbelievably great. But when he's telling that story at the beginning, I was like, You're the reason I'm turning subtitles on. I want you to know this. <laughs> you are the reason I'm turning so not Ben Mendelssohn. Right. I understand him clear as fucking day, man. I love he talks to this trailer like, every two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah Mendel- but it's, it's got like this, um so like even for me mendelssohn's got this really slack jawed bogan ish accent um like it's something you would find in a uh lower socioeconomic kind of like spectrum here uh which uh which is 100 percent um in line with this character like Mr. i mean fancy like- pants how about that <laughs> no i'm just kidding well, but like i mean I think Ben Mendelsohn as an actor knows that, right? Like, so, you know, he's like, okay, I'm oh, kind of sure. playing this work, like down on his luck, sort of like criminal. So I kind of like need to slow my voice a little bit because Ben Mendelsohn does not speak like that in real life. Oh, God, no. He's great in The Outsider as well. He's got a great American accent. Um, but all in all, I just, I was really impressed with this movie. I was really uh impressed by its potential i don't think it quite lives up to the to a the the story that it could really be i think it comes very close to being um you know a, a really really great movie it's a very good movie uh but i mean for me the perfect movie length is like an hour 40 like an hour 45 i'm totally fine with that uh i think a buck 30 is just a little too short for like um this kind of story, but it's also, it's kind of like a testament just to how good it is. Even at like a, a dollar 27, I think is how, is how long this fucking movie is. Um, so all in all, I was excited to talk about it. I've kind of been watching Sopranos. So it, it definitely scratched that itch for me. And I love these crime stories that aren't, um, art heist. They aren't like heat. It's not bank robberies. It's just a simple ski mask and a, and a revolver. It's something that anybody could have in their home. You know, you don't have to get an armored car or get a radio and get on the police frequency. You're just hitting this mob game, uh, which I think is great. Um, you know, Vincent Curatola is like, there's something as Johnny Sack, he's like almost intimidating. You know, he's yes. got those real dark bags under his eyes and he's, I love the way that he talks. And then as squirrel, he's kind of pathetic. Like he's kind of weaselly. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's something about him that's just so obviously I know he's gained some weight and stuff, you know, and he looks very different from when he was in the Sopranos. Um, but all in all, it was like, man, this guy, even though he's essentially playing a very similar character to wh- who he was in the Sopranos, feels light years away from Johnny. Johnny yes. Sack wouldn't fucking, wouldn't share a bathroom, you our know, wouldn't, wouldn't be in the same. Yes. Yeah. A friend from, a friend from New York. Uh, Johnny Sack wouldn't be caught dead in the same bathroom with this guy. You know, he'd be like, nah, get this guy out of here. Get this guy out of here. Come on. Um, but all in all, I was, I was really impressed with it. I just, I think I thought it would make, uh, something really interesting to talk about. Uh, there's some meat on the bone. If you want it there, if you don't, if you just want a cool looking, movie with a simple story that's that's also there for you but if you want to get into the downfall of western society you can do that too absolutely you know? <laughs> those, those are those are my favorite types of movies dude I, I love i love a movie that's not trying to be very in your face about the message that it's pushing but at the same time if you are wanting to dig deep and talk about it on a podcast like we are you can right i mean you know it's definitely right. there for you um you know i think um dominic when he made this movie was like really came into it with that is like I, I didn't read any interviews or anything like that, but like he was just, you know, it's very obvious that he's like, okay, let me try and make this this gangster crime film that when when I watched it, I was nineteen that I could enjoy, a nineteen year old could enjoy, but like now right. here I am, fucking eight years, oh my god, eight eight years later. <laughs> I know, dude. I, I was later. like, wait. I was yeah. like, man, James Gandolfini. What was this? Twenty sixteen. Yeah. James Gandolfini was still alive, and then I was right. like, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Nine years later, and still enjoy. Um, and you know, now that I've discovered things about the world in the last nine years and uh, figured out exactly what the housing crisis was in 08, Thank you so much to the Big Short. Um, you know, I yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, I'm able to look at this movie with a different view, different lens. Yeah, hell yeah. The only thing left that I really have to say is if I uh, the only thing I really took away is what is this movie about is I, I think it's just really um, 
an analogy for the financial crisis. You know, the financial crisis is the card game getting hit again because nobody's making any money. There's no, you know, the whole thing is getting shut down. Like every everybody's getting yeah. fucked. Nobody wins when these card. One guy might win when this card game gets shut down, but everybody else gets fucked. So then you have the federal government stepping in as Brad Pitt, you know, and Wall Street is the, you know, basically the mob in this this game. And you have to let, all right, that's enough. Let's let 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 us take over and kind of steer the ship for a minute and figure out what's going on. Uh, and that's that's about the closest thing to any kind of yeah. deeper meaning that jumped right off the page at me. You know, I, I, I'd have to dig harder for shit. Yeah, for me, it was about like necessity, like the things you'd be driven to do if you didn't have a source of income or any income whatsoever. Um, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like if-, if Desperation. The, right, yes. Because of the housing bubble, uh, if you're a civilian, you know, not I'm saying like not someone wrapped up in the mafia world, you know, and you're watching this, you're like, damn, like, you know, is this something that I could have been driven to? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like a- it's right. like it's like how far would I be willing to go to get what I want? You know what I mean. So, um, I think uh, I, I love a story about desperation. Um, you know, like they like these two these two guys, they're not desperate, but it's the only way they can really earn money. <laughs> you know, it's the only way that they right. can really go they about were, doing. They it. were they were definitely wrapped up in this before 08 but yes. but even even though they're not a part of like normal 9 to 5 society yeah the financial crisis still affects them because yes. it affects the people that control the business that they're in you know yeah. and it's interesting to me that scoot's character frankie um ends up you know he he buys he buys a new car he buys a new jacket whatever but russell ben mendelsohn's character actually invests the money <laughs> like right. you know what I mean? Like uh, there's something about that where it's like, how does this guy, the fucking heroin addict, end up investing his money so he can grow, whereas uh, Frankie, you know, just ends up spending it. It's it's just interesting, really, really interesting. Right? Yeah, absolutely, <sighs> absolutely. Um, I tell you what, let's jump into this and kind of take it off because I think the first word that comes out of this movie is um, America. Yeah, I think that's literally uh, the first word. Yep, and I love if you slap those together. It's America now. Fucking pay me my, you know, now fucking give me my money is great. Um, we start off by seeing, and I did not know this. I had to read this online that this is when Frankie is getting out of jail. I was like, oh shit, okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Adds to the desperation. He's walking out of this big, empty, dark hole into the into the light of day. Apparently, this is set in 1987's old Detroit via RoboCop. I don't know. <laughs> like, I just expected to see RoboCop shooting guys in the dick, like left and right on this. On it this is. It street. is very dour, <clears throat> uh, downbeat, right? Like, it, like you know, there's newspapers and shit flying everywhere. It did remind me. Oh, of dude, yeah. It's like I, I guess they're in like Boston, somewhere up north. I immediately thought Detroit. It was the first thing I thought of. Maybe it is Detroit. I don't know. Uh, but uh, we're introduced to, uh, like you said, what what is it? Scoot O'Neary? What the fuck is this guy's uh, name? Scoot, Scoot McNeary. Patches of Hulahan? <laughs> Scoot McNeary. Uh, <laughs> if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> You're about as useful as a cock flavored lollipop. Uh, R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P. Riptord. Um, oh, but uh, we're introduced to, uh, to Riptord, dude. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Zed himself. Well, what does it say? Necessary? Is it necessary for me to drink my own urine? No, but I do it anyway because it's sterile and I like the taste. Oh, uh, so good, man. He reminds me a lot of Brian Cox. I always, always thought the two of he them would do it. Would would go great together. Um, God, you we're, gotta, what we're you, seeing. You gotta uh, watch Succession. It's so fucking good. I know. I, I gotta finish up Sopranos and Saints of Newark first, motherfucker. Um, this, okay, uh, this we're, is we're a seeing, better companion uh, movie to oh, Sopranos Jesus Christ, than many what? Saints of Newark. <laughs> I'm t I'm talking on I've a podcast. That. Fucking, that's a crime. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have <clears throat> I have heard that. I've heard that Saints of Newark is okay. I've heard a lot of people say it should have come out 10 years ago. And I was like, eh, okay. I think that's probably yeah. fair. You know, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know I, I would be pissed if it's like Stranger Things wraps up two years from now. And in like 2035, they put out a movie. I'd be like, you fucking assholes. Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, so we see him uh, getting out, getting out of jail. He's uh, you know, he's also talking with Squirrel, uh, aka Johnny Sack. Uh, 
um, you know, we're basically getting our setup here. We're introduced to Russell, played by Ben, the the amazing Ben Mendelsohn, who just he looks like he walked off the set of fucking Train Spotting, dude. He looks amazing. Like his his whole like he looks like he just shared a needle with you and McGregor. You know what I mean? Like he looks incredible, and he's always covered in that like perma sweat. Like he looks like the greased up deaf yeah. guy and family guy. You know, he's just always sticky and like sweaty. Um, and oh, I'm pretty sure, sure he's a yeah, rapist. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure he's a rapist, right? Yes, he absolutely is because there's a moment here out on the street when he says, yeah, I've got a girl to go fuck and they're talking about the quality of this girl and he's like, well, you wouldn't rape her, but, and it's like, what right. the fuck? Like, who Dude, is, what and is it, this like, human? How- it's not even like the word is obviously a fucking bomb going off now, like in a conversation, but it's the casualness of it that it's like, what the fuck? And then later on, he's like, man, I don't know what you're fucking doing with those dogs. And he's like, oh, I can't do it with a dog, mate. Dude, I mean, I've he, just, he, I've heard they, they nip, you know, they, you don't want to do that, mate. Yeah. And you're like, what the <laughs> right. fuck is going on, dude? Yeah, this this Ugh. guy is an absolute train wreck of a human being. He's a he's menace. A, he like, is a menace, you know? But but not only that, dude, he's stealing and selling these dogs. <laughs> I know. That's so uh I would get that guts oh, me, dude. Shit. Um even as someone who hates like purebred dog shit, like I'm like, ah no, adopt adopt, don't shop, get mutts, you know. Um, but still this- it's like it just breaks my heart, you know. There's some kid at home like, has anybody seen Rex? You know. <laughs> right. Um, this was the year that um Ben Mendelsohn really started to become a thing 2012. Um, so this year, 2012, he had Killing Him Softly. And I remember specifically being like, who is that guy in The Dark Knight Rises? Because, like, you know, Bane puts his, oh, like, yeah. he puts his hand on his shoulder and he's like, yeah, he's like, don't test oh. me. He, like, um, and then, like, you know, after fortune. that, he was in, right, um, The Place Beyond the Pines. That's all in one year. Right, so the place beyond the pines, the dark night rises in this, and then he just blows up. Right, like he ends up being in Rogue One and you know, Ready Player One, and you know, it's fucking massive, massive things. But yeah, yeah, I um, I love this 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 whole meeting, you know, that they have that's kind of being set up and stuff. And he's saying, "Hey, this is the job. If you want to come see me next Thursday," he kind of goes back and forth with Squirrel. Says this guy's too fresh for my blood. Um, we get this meeting up with him. He says he's been taking these dogs and selling them in Florida. Um, you know, thinking of you know, fuck the girl meeting with Squirrel. Fuck the Squirrel. I think I'll fuck the girl. And it's like, dude, he's so good, man. <laughs> I like. Like we'll get to the reason I picked this movie, but but as I began watching this, like this is the reason that I love this movie. I think it's Ben Mendelsohn. He just encapsulates. He, if anybody as a character in the movie, encapsulates what this world is about is Ben Mendelsohn. He's the, like you definitely get the feeling that Frankie is not nearly as bad as Russell. Like Russell is yes. the scum of the earth. You know, it's like yes. good god, dude. I, I, and, I but beg it's you, weird that, I like, beg you to seek out Animal Kingdom if you can. That mo- the movie okay. that I mentioned. I will. Yeah. I'll check it out. Um, and you know, you and you get the feeling that Frankie is so much, you know, uh, better than Russell. You know, but it's like, dude, you hang out with this like dog fucker and shit. I don't know. It's just weird. Um. <clears throat> But basically, uh, you know, they they end up taking on the job, and uh, this this is basically where the you know the setup, our hook of the movie comes in. This is where you know he says uh, you're going to hit a poker game. He's like, well, I got fucking ten different poker games I can hit. You know, the problem is hitting the poker game and getting away with it because they're protected by the mob. That's your whole setup there. Um, and he says, uh, you know, he, basically he's talking about getting a job at this fucking place, you know, uh, trying to get it, trying to get a, a regular nine to five job. Um, and he ends up telling him about this poker game. He's like, hey, this this is what's going to go down. You know, a few years back, Ray Liotta, he's running these games. He ends up robbing him himself, which is a very interesting like, like, again, like you said, you see that in Sopranos. And I feel like it's not, you know, I've not not a cliche or a trope. But it's 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 definitely like a robbing the mob kind of thing. It's like a big uh, hell. The Dark Knight starts with it. You know, it's like robbing the mob It's like, dude, you don't know what the fuck you're going to do. And <clears throat> I yeah, like the fact is, that this, this kind of. Inv- huge. Yeah. yeah, then it inverts it on its head. And it's like, we're actually going to have a guy rob himself. 
And it's like, yes, yeah, so fucking of course you would. That makes so much sense. You know, he pockets everything and nobody thinks it's really him. He, he, you know, he just, everybody likes him and he kind of manipulates that. Uh, and basically he, you know, he robs his own game. Uh, he gets interrogated by the mob. We were introduced to Dylan played by Sam Shepard. Who's in this movie for eight Sorry, seconds. Briefly. I was like, what? Oh. Is, Sam Shep- Is that Sam Shepard? <laughs> What I love again, it's not you know, it's not Sam Shepard. It's not a dude uh, in a suit with a toothpick wearing like a fedora. He's like wearing just a short sleeve shirt and like a blue jeans, you know. And it's like he's he's so casual about like coming to beat the fuck out of Ray Liotta. Um, that's one of my favorite parts of the movie when he when they come to Ray Liotta's trailer show. house thing. I love that we stay dude, outside when he puts him yeah. through that. He puts him through that fucking window. What the fuck, Dylan? Right. What the hell is all this about? <laughs> right. It's like, dude, you understand why he got a pass because he sells the fuck out of it. You know, he sells the outrage yeah. of like, how dare you think that this is me? You. you know, and, yeah. oh, it's perfect. It's so good. The other guy, um, the the one that's with him, Kenny, the muscle, you know, like the kind of like sort of short, chubby dude. Mm-hmm. Um, he's in the town. Uh, he's in a couple of Ben Affleck movies. Um, his I think his name is. I did not realize. That. I think he's like a Boston musician. His name is. I think he goes by Slane S L A I N E. But yeah, he's been in a few things. We 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 talked about him in the town. Man, I do not remember him at all. Sorry, uh, Slane. Um, but uh, basically he uh he starts you know uh, telling him, hey, this is this is what's going to happen. Uh, as soon as you hit this car game, they're going to go after the people that did it, and he's like, well. Somehow, Squirrel, that doesn't make me feel any fucking better. Like, that that <laughs> part did make me laugh out loud. I was like, okay, this is great. It's actually kind of um, a genius, to be honest. It's a great fucking idea. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, the, and you know, you know you we're, we're, going to. we're, yeah. we're a, yeah, if you're going to do it, and we're 11 and a half minutes into the movie. Perfect. That's just, inc- like, so lean. Like, 12 minutes in, we're in the car going to, to rob this fucking thing. Um. They talk about, you know, fucking a crazy chick, how she's going to, you know, she says, I'm going to fucking kill myself. You're like, oh, all right. Well, there's that, I guess. Um, and uh, he, I love their argument. He's like, oh, fuck you and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, you haven't been lying, have you? Like, he just everything, everything to him is about, like, just shoving his dick. In. They're even talking about him fucking some guy named Goat. Or satchel goat or goat ass or something. Yeah, and I was goat, like, dude, if ass. you're yeah. in prison, I guess <laughs> goat right? ass. Yeah, yeah, you're you're fu- if you're fucking somebody whose name starts with a barnyard animal, it's not you know <laughs> the one thing. If it's like, oh yeah, she's a real you know Very she's sanitary. a real hot fox or yeah, but if it's like, oh no, she's a fucking bitch pig. It's like, nah, I don't want to, I don't want to fuck goat ass or bitch pig. That doesn't sound nice. Um. But uh, basically, uh, you know, they they pull up to this place. Uh, they're admiring the car as well, which is it is kind of a, a cool car that he's that that stolen car. Um, they pull up in pantyhose and fucking uh, oven cleaning gloves, which is great. Uh, he's like, is this the only fight? He's like, they're the only ones they you know, the only ones they had. Uh, it's just fucking in- incredible. Um, I don't understand the pantyhose. I see this in movies and it's like, it, I just, I'm going to spot you right away, dude. It's see through. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I don't, I don't understand the pantyhose in this movie. Um, like, I don't understand. I mean, I guess it kind of lends to them being not very bright <laughs> because, yeah. like you said, it is incredibly translucent. Like, you can see right through it or transparent rather. So, like, yeah, I don't know, but but this 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 scene is absolutely incredible, dude. Like the lead into it is just all like done in one single shot. I love that like Ben Mendelsohn's character Russell goes back and like checks to see if anyone else is there. So they're not right, you know. We know that they're not super bright, but they've definitely done this before enough to be proficient enough to go and check to see if there's other people lurking about. Sure, you know? um, sure, but, um, yeah, yeah. We we get the shortest double barrel shotgun I've ever seen in my life, dude. Uh, that thing, it's like <laughs> the spread on the fucking shells. It's going. He's literally. It's like, like a reverse umbrella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's crazy, man. Like, yeah, you because know, um, Frankie says this is going to kill everyone in the room, and it's like, yes, it probably will. Like, it's got no accuracy yes. whatsoever. Everyone's going to get some pepper out of that shaker when that thing goes off. Um, 
And, and I just, I love, you know, I think that one thing that The Sopranos did really well that this movie is definitely benefiting from is showing the, you know, like Satrials and uh, the Bada Bing, like the back rooms are not these glorious, like fountains and chandeliers and shit. It's like a table, you know, with like, they might have a pool table back there, you know, that like they eat, they just eat sandwiches. You know, they're not eating steak and caviar and shit. It's like, this is a very, uh, you know, where are they even? What is this? It looks like an abandoned VFW, you know? I don't know where the fuck this this little room is, but it's like, this feels almost like a story that could take place in Gotham. Like, it's just in this seedy little corner of this dirty little town, and that's almost what it feels like. It's like just, I don't know, there's something about it that I love. Is like, it reminds me, speaking of Ray Liotta, Sin City, yeah, because he's in Sin City too, I think. Um one of my favorite lines from from basically all uh, one of my favorite lines from all of cinemas in Sin City is like walk down the right uh, walk down the right back alley in Sin City and you might find anything, and that's what really this world feels like is there's a thousand different greedy dirty little things going on around you all the fucking time. Um, they pull in. I'll give it to Mendelssohn. He does look like a fucking a human like sock thumb under that thing, you know. Like, I would not guess that's Ben Mendelsohn. The other guy, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can tell that guy's name is Scoot, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, the the panic on Ray Liotta when, they, when the, he comes down and he realizes, like, oh, fuck, I'm going to have to pay for this. And he just very slowly, like, puts his jacket on. He's like, you want the money? You know, it's like, ah, dude. And he's trying his dude, best to talk Russell out of it. Like, oof. Imagine what's going through his head as he's like, oh, like, he's like, oh, I'm I'm dead either way. Like, you know, like, there's yeah. no way they're going to believe me, <laughs> you know, as he's going to go get the money. You can just see, you can just see the, 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 the cogs twirling in his head, man. Like, oh, yeah, it's awesome. What a great performance by Ray Liotta, man. Well, and, and and also like the 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 other mobsters that we have playing this card game, the guys are kind of side eyeing, and you see some of them kind of looking at Ray Liotta. You see some of them just kind of looking around the room, and everybody everybody is going, "Oh, Marky, dude, like you fucked up, man. Like you've really fucked up. Like every everybody here at this in this room is like Marky. Everybody thinks this is Marky. It feels like." Um, they uh, the, not only do they get the cash, but they also decide to rob everybody there. Uh, I mean, why not? In for a penny, in for a pound. Uh, good Ray Liotta quote from Copland, by the way. Fuck you. Um, it's just such a good movie, man. Copland and this and Sopranos. That's a hell of a combination. Perfect. That'd be really yeah. great. Um, I love the shot of Frankie moving out and just how did we reach this point in our community? How would the solution? I suppose I, I, you know, basically, how would my solution work best? What this is, what does this mean for your financial future? These are good questions, and they deserve good answers. And it's on the TV as we're walking out. It's great. It's a little ham-fisted in some spots they play about eight or nine different times and but i get it that would be on the tv all the fucking time i don't think these people give a shit about c-span you know right. these people are watching jersey shore and shit you know they don't or they're watching you know i don't know they're you know the office or some low caliber show uh no i'm just kidding the um the, you know they're they're not watching c-span they're not watching cnn and fox so like i could see it being on the radio or being on a TV here or there, but it's like eight or nine fucking times. Like it's really hammered in by, by the end of it. And I was yeah. like, okay, yeah, yeah. dude, Jesus Christ. It's a hundred percent on purpose. Yeah. And it's exactly what, what Dominic's going for. Um, and again, you can choose to ignore it or you don't have to, but I think that the ending definitely the, the ending when, um, when Jackie kind of like gets chipped on his pay, like that that is that is a hundred percent pointing to the fact uh, like yes, the C SPAN stuff is not accidental. Like, you know, that was yeah, that was in there on purpose. Right, yeah. And uh it, it reminds me of a line in the Sopranos where Junior's talking to Tony and he was like, Oh, this fucking economy is so good, you're getting credit for shit you didn't even do. And Tony's like, You're goddamn right, you know, like hell yeah, I am. Yeah, and and it is. It's like there. everybody thinks yeah, yeah, uh, I, I love when a junior falls in the show. It's like, oh, your sister's cunt. Um, uh, your sister's cunt. No, the <laughs> the um, yeah, but but it's just interesting showing that the you know that one always affects the other. That crime 
has to have opportunity to exist. And without, when there's no market, there's no opportunity. Um, after, uh, after this successful robbery, we are finally, like you said, 25 minutes later, we're introduced to Jackie played by Brad Pitt. Um, again, this is based off of a book. I, I believe it's called like, uh, oh, I'm going to fuck this up. It's, it's called, um, it's like, Kogan's trade by George Higgins. That's right. That's right. Apparently also a very lean book. Um, okay. But after watching this, I would definitely like to check it out. It's, it sounds interesting. Yeah. Um, this I, um, I, this introduction I, to... Oh, sorry. My bad. Uh, I think we have, might, might, might have... No, no, no. You go ahead. But I, I love this introduction introduction to Pitt's character because, you know, you've got that cool, like, Johnny Cash song. And if you listen to the lyrics, it fits exactly what's going to happen. Like, you know, it, it's like mm-hmm. there's, there's a man going around taking names. And then it's like... Um, he decides he decides who to free and who to blame, and it's just like, damn, like this is this is Jackie, <laughs> like he's the one yeah. who's going to have to decide. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it all. Yeah. Um, and with along with our introduction to Jackie, we're all also introduced to. I don't even think they ever say his name. I believe he just calls him Counselor uh, Richard Jenkins' his character. I, I think that's it. I don't know if they ever even name drop. It might be in the credits, but I, I've never even bothered to look. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I think you're right because on on Wikipedia, he's just credited as a driver. So, uh, wow, holy shit. Yeah, but uh, yeah, um, I, I'm assuming he's the lawyer for the higher ups. Right. All I could think of was Kate Fear and De Niro. I'm a counselor man. That's like all I could think of. <laughs> for, for anyone who's um, seen The Wire, um, he's the Maurice Levy. <laughs> of this world he's kind of like the crooked lawyer for the guys in in the wire it's so good oh okay yeah. um we have this meeting under the bridge uh yeah you know, basically he's kind of filling him in he's saying hey this is what went down um you know we think it might have been a couple of kids oh trapman said that he's like well last time i checked there's nothing wrong with chapman's smell or you know uh hearing he's like well that's what Trapman says. Yeah. You know, it's like god damn it dude this guy he, he says he won't take any shit immediately won't take any shit yeah yeah, I love it. Um, and he's just kind of breaking it down for him. Hey, this is what uh, this is what's going on. We want you to pay uh, pay a visit to Tratman. Uh, hey, now wait a minute. I'll wait a week if you want. If you're paying me, you know, basically, ah, it's such a good line. Um, he says the games are closed. Uh, you know, we need to get uh, money going back up. People are losing money. Uh, you know, they don't like it when we lose money. We hit Tratman, get things started up again, and people uh, get back to doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and he says, I want to find out if he did it first. Does it doesn't make a difference if he did it or not. You know, we have to go to Trapman. Like we have to hit him. Just honestly, just as an example. We have to set an example. And we do need to talk to him. Um, I you know, I like that Richard Jenkins is beating around the bush and he's like, Yeah, just a, a, a beating. He's like, but don't hurt him there. He's like, Oh, shut the fuck up, dude. It's like you guys always say that, of course you want me to hurt him. And he's like, Okay, all right, yeah, yeah, you're right. I want you to hurt him. And it's like, uh, it's it's just so good, man. It, and I love seeing somebody cut through like yeah. the bullshit of a conversation, you know, and just be like, dude, just spit it the fuck out. Like you want him to bleed. Okay, cool. Gotcha. I love Pitt. I love Pitt in this role. Like, I mean, like I love the no nonsense, like, you know, let's, let's get things done, you know, like just uh, like the enforcer. I, I think Pitt, you know, when you, when you look at his career, I think he definitely makes interesting decisions, like, you know, on who to work with and what projects to work with. I mean, like, obviously he's worked with Fincher a couple times, but like, yeah, you know, like he's not he's not afraid to take on franchise films. Like he's not he's just a uh, man. Like I he's he's probably one of my favorite A listers because he kind of like goes beyond the a the 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 surface level A list stuff. Like you know what I mean? Like he's not sure he's not really Will Smith. Like there's a little bit more going on with with Pitt. Uh, so much so yeah, that he's yeah. he's he's won an Oscar for. Uh, Quentin, Quentin's movie, but yeah, like I, I love Pitt in this man. He's so good. Yeah, I, uh, I, I like his decisions a lot. He's not afraid to do shit like, <clears throat> you know, Deadpool or World War Z. You know, he pops up in Deadpool for like half a fucking <laughs> second. Uh, you know, he'll do something like World War Z, but then he'll also do uh, Interview with the Vampire. You right. know, he'll do California, which is a great like older movie he was in with David Duchovny and Juliette Lewis. Twelve Monkeys. Might have been Kill a Foreign. Yeah, Twelve Monkeys. Um, he's, he's great in a lot of, in a lot of these movies. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, he's kind of, I feel like he's one of those actors that 
almost became like you knew too much about his personal life. Like he almost came to that level for us, like Brangelina. That was a whole thing. And then eventually it just stopped. And I was like, okay, cool. Like I can, I like, I like Brad Pitt again. Cause I don't feel like I, the more I know about you, the harder it is for me. Yes. I don't know shit about Ben Middleson. Ben Middleson can be gay. He can be straight. He can be whatever. I don't know shit about him. And I love that. And it makes me really get immersed in Ben Mendelsohn's roles. You know, I don't want to know a goddamn thing about him. Kind of, kind of reminds um, me of Cruz, except Cruz did go over that line of like, we know way too much yes. about you now. But ever since yes. his, um, I guess, divorce with Katie Holmes, he's kind of like fallen off that sort of spotlight of controversy. And now it's just all about like acting. Like it's all about like acting and movies right. and whatever, which is what it should, should have always been. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, we get these guys going to pay a visit to Marky. Uh, they say, man, he's going to make this difficult for us. No, he's not. He goes, yeah, he is. He's like, I, I love that pause. And he's like, I know whatever is going to happen is not going to be easy. Uh, and they, I was like, okay, yeah, they'll rough him up. They'll give him. And they just kept dude. hitting him. And I was like, dude, this is awful. Like, I'm getting nauseous watching this, dude. Yeah, the way it's shot as well. Like, the, the super brightly lit. Uh, the rain, and like I feel like they've they've um they've sped up the footage like uh in post in in uh post production because like it feels it looks very very different. Um, yeah, the frame rate is very different as yeah. well. But it's it's a it's a really and, interesting technique because it, it yeah this is a this is a brutal scene. Dude, and him th- like vomiting up the blood and shit. They're like, and oh yeah, spleen might have like, oh dude. And they're like, yeah, he might have he might have popped a spleen, you know, or something. It's like Jesus Christ, man. Um, and it almost feels like like a uh, you know they're like holding his arms and hitting him. The side. It's like, dude, this almost feels like a rape scene. You know, it feels awful because he's just totally defensive. He's like, dude, you know, and, and they're holding his arms back and letting the other dude hit. It's fucking crazy to watch. It's and it's really really fucking awful. Um. And uh, like you said, it's 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 just it's fucking raining like hell. It's just super brightly lit. Um, it's super brightly lit, and, and Ray Liotta plays that like patheticness so well. They beat the shit out of him. It is fucking awful. Um, we catch back up with uh, Frankie and Russell. Uh, everything's all sunshine and rainbows now. Like you said, Frankie's got the car. He's got the haircut. He's got the jacket. You know, they're 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 feeling on top of the world. And the the, the hilarious thing. Is that it shows them in this? It's like, yeah, we got all this awesome. Yeah, we got it. I mean, I think they said they racked a hundred grand from this game, so they probably made 30, 40 each, um, maybe. But at the same, you know, it just kills me that they get this money and they immediately go sit in this like shit ass flop house <laughs> that, like, you know, it, it, it again that this feels like the house that they find. Ben Affleck's Batman in and Batman versus Superman, you know, when he's like crawling up the ceiling, you know, it just, it feels like this shit ass, like crack house kind of feeling. Um, yeah, but, but this also, is visually also they stupidly, uh, I mean, like uh, Frankie at least stupidly spends his money pretty much immediately. Like, you know, like this uh-huh. reminds me of the Robert De Niro. Yeah. yeah, yeah get that coat off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what, what does he say? You know, he does the fucking, um, Oh, the with the Cadillac. Yeah, the Cadillac and the, yeah, take the it bitch back. with the fucking... Take it back. That's right. Take it back. You take it back. <laughs> oh, dude, he is fucking... <laughs> it's my mother's name. What'd you say? What'd you say? You fucking getting smart with me oh, now? Oh, God. Um, he yeah, tears the uh, fucking card off that bitch. <laughs> mm. I, and she's like, oh, I just got that card. Because I'm saying, yeah, excuse me, honey. No one's talking to you, you know? <laughs> um, But, uh... We see that uh, they got a bit of a problem now. Um, this is visually unbelievably beautiful, and it revs up the tension. Is like, you know, we, we see him going out of Florida, and he blows up the car, and and he gets hit, and it's just really funny. And it's immediately followed by like the devastating ass news of like, yeah, they figured out who did it pretty quickly uh, because Russell was blabbing to Kenny. I think is his name, Kenny. Yeah, well, because I remember watching uh, like <laughs> so I was watching this movie for this for the podcast and i was like hold on like kenny is there like russell's there with kenny in this flashback but we saw kenny with dylan before so what the right. fuck <laughs> and then you kind of right, like, piece right. it together 
Well, and what's interesting too is how you talk about Russell is the one who is actually trying to invest his money, and he's one of the only ones that's spared. You know, yeah, he goes to jail. You know, yeah, he's going to go to prison, but he's not dead. You know, that's that's what's kind of interesting, and he's right. He's at least alive by the end of this. Um, and uh, you know, he's talking about all these grand plans. You know, I'm going to you know get this heroin and make this money. I just this this is some of the best drug use I've seen in a movie since Requiem for a Dream. Uh, they just do such an incredible job uh, of just the visuals, the audio, uh, the things cutting in and out, the panic on Frankie when he's like he's like Russell, wake the fuck up! Are you talking about Kenny? So I was, you know, and it's like, dude, you realize things have gone very badly now, uh, and that Russell does not fucking care. He's so high, you know, and, and he is exactly. Um, I don't know, you know, at, at the same time, he doesn't get killed. He's like, he's like actually investing his money, but he is the reason this all goes to shit because he can't keep his goddamn mouth shut. You know, it's very interesting. It's like there, there's something telling in the fact that the guy, one of the only guys who doesn't get his brains blown out is the one who started all the shit in the first place. You know, it's like when drunk drivers hit somebody head on and then the other person dies and the drunk driver's fine. It's like you stupid cunt. Like you're the one who's put all this in motion. Um, and they start freaking out, you know. Hey, we've got a we've got a, a, a contract on our heads. Uh, great reaction of Frankie in the car, just freaking the fuck out on the way home. It's it's really 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 good. Um, we get this uh, meeting between counselor and uh, and Jackie. Uh, but I tell you what, this is actually this is a good spot to. I I'm gonna grab a drink. I'm gonna empty my bladder. You want to take a break real quick? Yeah, sounds good. All right, guys, don't go anywhere. I will be. Oh, we will be right back with the second half of our coverage of Killing Them Softly. Hey, guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. We're having a great time recording this. Uh, This is just me breaking in here to tell you all about Bad Crystal, a Breaking Bad podcast, hosted by yours truly, us here at Minute Double Feature. Uh, this is a podcast that we have been, uh, I guess, recording in the background as, uh, you know, I- I'm a big, big Breaking Bad fan. I mean, I love that goddamn show. Um, it kind of like sort of shaped me <laughs> and introduced me to, I guess, what, the, what, what, what we call now the golden age of television. Um, you know, I followed it when it was airing, um, and now Colin, Colin's never seen it before, so I'm kind of guiding him through the entire series, and we're having a great time doing it. We're currently recording season three, uh, seasons one and two are now available via the Bad Crystal, a Breaking, a Breaking Bad podcast feed, so if you want to go and check that out, you absolutely can, we highly recommend it, it's so, it's such a fun side gig for us. Uh, and we're having the best time doing it. So check it out. It's called Bad Crystal, a Breaking Bad podcast. Season three is on its way. Uh, um, and I, I can't be more excited. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for supporting the show. As always, much love from us here at Midnight Double Feature. And back to the episode. everybody thanks for tuning in for the second half of our coverage of killing them softly we are freshly squeezed as we always like to say and i haven't said it in a while but there is an e on this motherfucker for a reason uh i always forget to say that uh anyways we're back uh, halfway through this episode then i don't we was yes sister's cunt we're like oh by the way guys this uh podcast is rated e for everyone um but uh, we get this meeting between jackie and the counselor he says hey uh you know this is what's what happened this fucking idiot guys running his mouth um you know we we've got to hit trapman it's on the street it's trapman it's nothing but trapman if you let this go we're gonna have every fucking kid in the ski mask and revolver holding up these goddamn games basically um and he agrees he's like hey yeah uh, you know I, I see what you mean i get it from a public angle and all you know we need to nip this thing in the bud and it's and it's it's so interesting how like 
I, I kept trying to think of the best word to describe their attitudes and talking about the demise of people and loss of like thousands of dollars. And they're so cavalier yes. about it. And it's like, it's so insane. Yes. You know, they, they're not, like they're not a business transaction, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, well, and, and my, and the, my favorite part of this is the council are just kind of like sitting there for a little bit and considering <laughs> and then being like, yeah. oh, yes, yes, yes. I see it now. Yes. Okay. It's just like, right. damn, like it's ins- it's insane to see a movie this patient that's ninety minutes long. That's what blows my mind about it. It tells a complete story. It's patient and it's short. It's like, man, this movie is just it shouldn't work, but it should. It's just kind of crazy. Um, and he says, I need New York Mickey. He says, New York Mickey's expensive. He says, Not right now. You know, uh, we need uh, Squirrel knows who I am. I can do the other two, but I need Mickey to to do this. Um, and this is what's kind of interesting because spoiler alert, uh, he doesn't, by the way, Brad Pitt ends up just kind of killing everybody. And part of me wonders, you know, I, I get it. Brad Pitt, you know, his reasoning is I want to, I want to kill him softly. I don't want to be there when he starts begging for his mom and pissing his pants and stuff. He's like, I don't want to kill him from far away. I don't want to get my hands dirty. That's, that's fair enough. I'm sure being an enforcer would take its toll on you after a while. You don't want to keep seeing that over and over again. Um, but the thing that I find interesting is the fact that he feels like he has to call Mickey in when he just ends up doing the hit anyways. And I feel like his reasons are not really reasons, you know, the, like they they are. But in the end, he just sucks it up and does it anyways instead of calling it. And it's like it's almost like he wanted Mickey, you know, it's like, yeah, I like this guy and I know he could use the work. And, you know, you know, I, I feel like he there's something about the fact that he wanted Mickey there. And he and I feel like Brad Pitt's character, he doesn't let it on a lot, but I feel like he's really disappointed in Mickey, not, not only from a professional standpoint, but like personally. Like, I feel like he was just like, man, what the fuck happened to you, man? You know, he really felt that way about Mickey. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it's the fact that maybe he heard Mickey was on hard times. Maybe he's just trying to get him work. I don't know. I don't want to speculate. Um, but I, I feel like where it would just be a prefer- professional kind of letdown. Like, man, that guy just really didn't work out. It feels like he's, you know, not heartbroken, but really disappointed. Because it, I, I, it's hard for me to figure out what the fuck Mickey is doing in this movie. Um, you know, uh, what is his purpose? What does he represent? What part of society, you know, uh, what part of capitalism or what, you know, and I just keep running it and I'm like, maybe it's just a, a symbol of like, well, back in my day or, ah, the, uh, the way things used to be kind of thing. And it's like, well, man, those fucking days are gone. Like you got to live in the real world now. That That's the only way I can kind of see this character working, but I, I'll tell you this straight up. 90% of the reason that I picked this movie is in 10% of this movie. <laughs> like James Gandolfini is I so. almost the entire reason I picked this movie. And it's the entire reason I even wanted to watch it from the first place. It's uh, I, one of the reasons we'll be covering the drop next week or next fortnight. Cause that is a fucking cracker. Oh, movie. the Tom Hardy, Tom Hardy thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, my pick for next, uh, last, next uh, It's his last one. That's his last one, isn't it? Yeah, it came out posthumously. Um, but but anyway, look, look. So Mickey is an addition to the movie, from my understanding. He was not in the book. Um, so he was he was added by Dominic as oh, a character. I did in this not movie. know that. Yeah. Um, my the way I look at it is that he's kind of like the way. Again, just just if we are taking what Dominic is sort of like putting down, um, this is someone who squanders a job, right? Like, I mean, like he does, yeah, he is employed. Um, unfortunately, it is a it is an illegal employment, but like he is employed and he's he squanders it. Like, you know, he decides to get drunk and he decides to bang hookers, and it's just kind of like. Yes, you are part of the old guard, but like also you're not really realizing the sign of the times that you're in right now when people are scrambling for work and scrambling for money and scrambling for employment. Um rather, right. you know, you're just you're just wanting to get paid for nothing. <laughs> and it really sure, ag- yeah. again, it, it's just the for me, <clears throat> the point of Mickey is that he is he 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 he's not reading the writing on the wall, you know. Like he's someone who's been doing this forever, and he's just 
he's not really adapting, you know? <laughs> like he's someone who's Right. And again, like, you know, he's not man, if we if we if we take that scene in the hotel room, I know we're not really there yet, but we can I guess we can talk about we can talk about Mickey's all of Mickey's scenes in one go because it's very Yeah, really, honestly, you know. The the moment when um they're in the hotel room and Mickey's, you know, telling off the, the hooker, um, which is fucking great dialogue, by the way. Um, it's oh, really, yeah. really electric. And Brad Pitt's just sitting there, like, you know, he's obviously very Pitt is kind of disgusted by Mickey's behavior, but he's too nice to say anything to Mickey. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And Mickey is this giant fucking steamroller of a man who just treats people like shit. <laughs> um, and, you know, Mickey, again, he's the old guy who asks for respect but doesn't give it. I, I right. Think, he's, he's just, his yeah. character is almost closer to like a like um like a sloth like Richie April from Sopranos. I see it. You know? I see it, yeah. Um I uh yeah, this this whole scene is just it, it's also I feel like a great you know, and I feel like people say this all the time and it loses its it's a master class intention. But it's like th- this is an extremely t- cuz you're watching right. this guy and he just keeps shrinking and I'm like Dude, each one of those, I'm get, I'm like the for one thing that martini is nineteen fucking dollars. Like, oh my god, yes. my god, <laughs> like it fucking gives me anxiety. I was like, Jesus oh, Christ, dude, that poor waiter um, when he fucking comes back and he's like, what What about the beer for my friend? <laughs> it's just like, oh, he's dude, like, he's like, yeah, I decided the to drink look, his beer. <laughs> the look he shoots him when he was like, I'm sorry, and he he just stops and gives him that corner eye out of those glasses, and I'm like, dude, you have no. You have no idea God. how close you are to tasting your own spinal fluid. Like you are, you are fucking dangerously close to the line. Um, I mean, and he's there, there's repugnant. a reason you know, why it, this guy, th- this guy was hailed as one of the best actors of all time, right? I mean, like he is just right. God, he he's so effortless, Gandolfini. Um, I normally don't like talking about like tabloid shit and stuff. Uh, have you ever have you ever read or seen anything about James Gandolfini's last meal? No, I haven't. It's fucking gnarly. It involves a lot of liquor. I'll say that. And I was like, Jesus Christ. I mean, he was a huge guy. That guy could fucking pound food and liquor, I'm sure. I just say Google it. It's it's pretty intense. Um, and it, that's and, and the sad, it's just all I could think about like during this was like, you know, they're like, yeah, and his last meal, he had about eight shots of tequila and two pina colada. It's like, fucking Christ, man. And it's like, all I could think about is watching him pound this alcohol and be like, oh, no, no, Jimmy, don't do it. Dude, um, apparently I, uh, every but. I just think yeah. of um, Family Guy. And <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know, Stewie goes somewhere and he's like, Man, this place is more deserted than James Gandolfini's workout room, and it's just Aww. Gandolfini walking past his his gym. <laughs> he's got like a burger in his hand, and he stops. Yeah, at the gym. I remember that. He stops at the door, looks inside, and he's like, Meh. "He just keeps walking." Yeah, <laughs> the, uh, you know. And I, and I was watching this, and I was thinking of uh, John Goodman. You know, I was like, "Dude, this yeah. could totally be you know John Goodman." And then it made me think of Family Guy, where it's just him eating you all can the have food. What's and left? Yeah, there's never anything left. Um, but I think it was the shades. The shades had me thinking of Big Lebowski. That's all I could fucking think oh. of. Um, oh, <laughs> you're dying over there, dude. Just, to, uh, just like because these are like some of my favorite clips from like Family Guy. I remember having to. I remember recording these on my phone and sending it to a friend and just like watching him back every time. And every time like John Goodman goes in for the <laughs> for the meal. And he's just like, wah, 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 and he's and the kids reaching for the turkey, and he's like, and he's, yeah, he slaps Stabs him, him away, with the fork. and he's like, I told you, you could have what's left, and the kids like, there's never any left. <laughs> My favorite is the last kid just. Like yeah. face first into his own bowl <laughs> and like dies. That's my favorite part of it. Uh, I, and I think it was oh. the glass. It felt there's something about Gandolfini's glasses that were very like Hunter S. Thompson. They were very Walter from uh, from uh, almost said Fear and Loathing from, from Big Lebowski. Um, 
And, you know, Jimmy's, or sorry, Jimmy, I don't know, I'm fucking, I should, uh, James Gandolfini scenes, uh, you know what fucked me up is I kept watching documentaries about him and they all call him Jimmy. And now I go, oh, Jimmy Gandolfini. I'm like, I don't know him like that. That's not cool. <laughs> you know, I'm, I shouldn't say that. Like, it'd be like someone would be like, yeah, your co host, your co host, you know, Zoe, uh, you know, Zoe De Chanel would be like, ah, oh, shut your fucking mouth. God damn it. That's, you don't get to call him that. Um, this whole thing is just like, God, the pity that this guy feels for himself. It makes me feel like Livia Soprano, like, I'll pull you. <laughs> That's like all I can think of the whole time. Um, and, you know, he basically is just breaking down his life is going to shit. You know, he uh, got popped on some gun charges. Um, he's going to be doing time. His wife just been threatening to divorce him. And it's like, Jesus Christ, dude, like if I, this guy kills himself in six months, if he, if he goes back home, you know, like. I love that Brad Pitt says he's like, dude, jail's probably the best thing for him because if this guy goes back to just his normal life, he's going to drink himself to death or kill himself or something. Yeah, um, but do you think you this know. guy goes cold turkey in jail? Does he survive? Oh no, no. This guy is definitely tricking out for like a fifth or something, you know, right? Like, or, or or he or he's beating people to death for it. Um, and uh, you know, he just kind of you know puts puts everything out there. Uh, yeah, and it's very awkward. It hangs in the air, and he goes, ah, but you know. What are you going to do? Let's kill some people. You know, and he kind of lays it out for him. Uh, he says he can't be down here long. We, we set up something, uh, the downfall of, uh, of, um, oh my God, what is this fucking character's name? Frankie. I just blanked on Jake. Frank, no, Frankie's the uh, scoot. Oh, Maki. Uh, Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. Um, oh, oh, sorry, I sorry. totally blanked. Yes. We okay. started throwing around Frankie and Jimmy, and it's fuck, it fucked me all up. <laughs> Mickey. Um, fucking Italians, yeah, and, man. And Mickey kind of. What can I tell you? I, oh, Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what. Um, Mickey kind of breaks down. He goes, uh, you know, uh, I shouldn't do two. I've got too much heat. I just need to do this one uh, and get back home as soon as I can, um, which is interesting because he ends up staying there for three days and just, you know, ha having like a Rick James party and just <laughs> fucking people and, you know, getting coked out and banging, banging women and shit. Um, but, uh, before that, we could finally get the death of Ray Liotta. Poor Ray Liotta. Um, I like <sighs> that both both times he's seen outside of anything, it's just fucking pouring down rain. It's like this guy just can't get out of the rain kind of thing. Um, one, and, one, uh, thing one thing that I just wanted to highlight before we do get to Marky's death is um, this meeting between Kenny and, and Jackie at this diner. And like as they're getting up, mm -hmm. is, is Kenny stealing the tip? Like you know, oh like, yeah. Uh, there's there's something about that that I just I think just also goes to Dominic's kind of like whole thing about like capitalism or anti capitalism, and you know like literally Kenny is taking away income from wait like the waitresses or the you know the, the employees. So it's just like it's a dog eat dog world, <laughs> you know, as it was in 2008 when you know people didn't know how the financial crisis was going to happen. A little shake out right and and it feels like you know not only is it a desperate move but at the same time it's like you know this guy just went to florida and sold a bunch of purebred dogs this guy doesn't need a dollar you know that's what's kind of fucked right. up about it if it, it feels like very scummy and it's a fucking dollar you know uh but i think it also shows to brad pitt's character because that is exactly what he is here to do he is to straighten out the the problems that have occurred and get everybody their money back and figure out what the hell is going on uh well maybe not get their money back but at least you know try try to figure out what the hell is going on um get the system we back. Can kinda, like get the system back right. up and running yeah absolutely right uh they pull up right beside marky Night night, Marky. This is some pretty cool shit. I, I like this I like the extreme gorgeous. close ups on the gun. I, I don't love some of yeah. the shit. Looks a little, you know, the CGI. digital shit looks a little. Yeah. Adult. yeah, it looks a little whack sometimes. But the c extreme close ups on the gun, the music that's playing in the Dude, background, the the water, uh, yeah. the water coming off the gun and the the shell casing as he fires it. You know, the slide gun. Oh back. yeah. Oh, Ray Liotta awesome. hitting the fucking windshield and it like turns into like a snowflake, you know, against his head. He gets hit by the cars. It's like fucking hell. Yeah, man. I love how long and drawn out it is. Like, you know, seeing these cars come through and just absolutely destroy him. Oh, it's awesome. Um, like you said, we can kind of skip this uh scene with uh Mickey and uh Jackie, uh where you know where we see him kind of, you know, just he's just been binging out. 
Uh, I do love the fact that, you know, straight up Brad Pitt finally hits a point where he's like, Mickey, Mickey. And he's like, what? He's like, are you all right? He's like, I'm fine. Like, it feels like it feels like RDJ and Zodiac when he was like, hey, Paul, are you all right? He's like, no, thanks for asking. You know, and it's like it felt it felt so similar to that scene. And I love that scene so much, like two unbelievably great actors. Uh, but we see just how, you know, how far Mickey has, has slipped now. And he's just he's always talking. One of my again, one of my favorite things from Sopranos is uh, Tony. When he goes down to like Miami with Paulie and a few other people, and they're like, "Hey, you remember when we did this? You remember when he goes, man? Fucking remember when it's the lowest form of conversation." I was like, <laughs> "Oh, I was like that is fucking killer, dude." And that's all Mickey is is remember when. That I feel like that's all he fucking yeah. is now. Is he is? I feel like he is like the My Chemical Romance song, Disenchanted. You know, just this spoiled kind of potential. You're just a sad song with nothing to say. You know, it's like, ah, oh, dude, that, that feels like Mickey to a T for me. Um, but I love, I, you know what? I, as much as I am perplexed by this character and I don't know what the hell is going on, I could watch James Gandolfini do this all day. I could literally, if this, if it were 90 minutes of just this, I would watch it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> man. This is his, This is his bread and butter. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it's, you know, at first when I started watching it, I was like, man, I just, I don't know how I feel. It just feels like Tony Soprano to me. And there were little, and he does, you know, cause James Gianofini sounds totally different. This is definitely a Tony Soprano voice. Like he's definitely putting on like an effect, but the moments where he's like, yeah, and you ever find a young Jewish girl hooking? <laughs> And I was like, oh, dude, okay, no, not even Tony Soprano would do that. Like, this guy's disgusting. He, you know, he's not as bad as Russell. He's not as bad as Mendelssohn, but no he's one's still as, pretty no one's fucking as bad gross. as Russell, dude. Come on. Right. Um, and uh, we see, uh, you know, Brad Pitt kind of lay down the law. This is what's important. He's like, hey, I'm going to call you. Go to fucking bed. I'm going to call you in five hours. Uh, if, if you're not ready, I'm, I'm going to call the cops. I'm going to have you picked up, you know. Um, and uh, he has a meeting with the counselor. He says, hey, you know, this ain't working. You know, Mickey, Mickey's uh, Mickey's not working anymore. Right. Um, and he was like, well, I got you the guy you wanted. That's what you wanted. He's like, I need the Mickey from a few years ago. This is uh, this right. is just not fucking working. The, anymore. the only way to get rid of him is to call the cops and have his bail revoked. And so he's back sent back to New York. Like that is that is ice cold, man. That is so fucking ice cold. Yeah, you know, and I, th I, and I thought that too, and I do agree with that to an extent. But it's better than murdering him. I feel like they could just kill yes. him. Yes, well, know? yes, and, and like you know whether that lines up. I think it's a bit of both because it lines up with Jackie's kind of like holier than thou sort of mindset, but it's also like I have respect for this person and and you know and what he used to be. That like I'm right. just not going to straight up kill him. Right. That that's definitely what it feels like. It feels like he really respects the fuck out of uh out of Mickey. Um and he says he's gonna get into a whore fight in a hotel that doesn't like whore fights. Um uh, and he's uh he's gonna get thrown out. Uh such a big dick move where he's like, please don't smoke on my car, please, come on. And he just stares at him. And then clicks the same. It's so good. I loved it, man. It's such a fucking baller ass. Like, even though he does kind of look like uh like I don't know, white trash Jesus, you know, he kind of has that like buckle, <laughs> like early two thousands, like, you know, kind of energy. Um, tell, tell you what about, like, I, I like about the counselor as well is like how separated the counselor is from that world. Like, you know what I mean? Like he is, he, he is the lawyer for the higher ups, but he's also not, he, well, he doesn't directly want to be involved in this. Like the smoking Right, like don't smoke in my car, but also like at the end when Jackie's at the bar and he very furiously puts out the fucking cigarette, like he doesn't want to be right. involved in any of this, like but he obviously has to be because this is what he does for money. Again, um, the 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 Andrew Dominic sort of like storyline as we're seeing here playing out the capitalism of it all. Right. Yeah. This is definitely a guy who doesn't like to get his hands dirty. He doesn't want to go home with the smell of, of this shit on him, uh, which, yeah. which I think, I, I think is great. Um, I believe after this is when we have Ben Mendelsohn getting picked up for his, uh, heroin deal gone wrong. Um, him, dude, the amazing detail, like you see how fucking close he is to that bus when that scene starts. Oh, yeah. 
Like, oh my God, man. Like uh, that is surely digital. I'm like, there's no way, dude. Ben Mendelsohn could like lick that bus as it went by. Like <laughs> It's so fucking close. Um, but he gets scooped up. Um, he gets scooped up real good. I like the cops coming and and peeling in like they're like they they run up like they're in a high speed chase like dude I I've pissed faster than this guy is walking <laughs> like calm down like that like you're I think you I think you can catch this guy without sh- you know showing up and slamming on your brakes and shit um but he uh he gets pinched as they say in the uh in the criminal world he's uh he's going away which which sucks because I fucking love Ben Mendelsohn's character but uh that's the last we'll see of him um uh, you know he gets scooped up um. We, uh, let me see here. After he gets scooped, we cut over to, uh, Frankie and Frankie's like, Hey, that's fucked up. You know, um, uh, you know, uh, but uh, I think it's squirrel squirrel tells him, Hey, he, t- he took his chances. He's like, yeah, but I, uh, you know, I, I took my chances. You took your chances. And now, you know, the reaper's coming. Uh, you know, they, they know that something is going to, especially after, uh, I think Marky got hit. I, th- I I don't know. I get the feeling like he they're like, oh, no, Marky took the hit. It's over with. And he's like, no, no, this thing's not over with yet. Because uh, I think there's a there's a line that he even says something about like the, you know, like it's going to rain down on all of us or something like that. I can't remember exactly what the fucking line is, but he's basically like, we're going to end up, you know, p- reaping what we sow. Um, you know, and, and but he even feels bad about it. He's like, you know, I'm glad it happened to Marky. Yeah, you know, he says, but then a second later, he's like, I'm actually, but I even feel bad about that. I, w- I, I don't wish it, I don't wish it on anybody. He says, this world is just shit. Uh, we're all just on our own. That's what he says. Um, we get this great scene of uh, Jackie going to this bar. We get the the shooting right there on this fucking street, which is just great. Like no hesitation. He doesn't even flinch at it at all. Uh, he goes into the bar and uh, really lays it down for Frankie here. He's like, hey, man. This is just what's going to happen. You know, I need information. If you don't know where he is, fine, that's okay. You know, but eventually somebody, you know, somebody's going to come after you. Uh, and he's really trying to play up and be his friend here. But I feel like, you know, they're talking very like in code, kind of incognito. They're not really saying anything in black and white. But from just kind of what I gather, Jackie's like, listen, you either help me with this or once I'm done with you, I'm going to, once I'm done with your friends, I'm going to come back here and fucking kill you too. Yeah, that that's kind of what I took away from it. Um, but Jackie, yeah, that's, that's, like like throughout this entire conversation, though, Jackie knows that in the end he is going to have to kill this guy because he is most likely. Yeah, the, he's the main target. <laughs> you know, he's the he's, he's well, why is yeah. He? I I and and especially when he's talking with Mickey, he's Mickey's like, how many do you need? He's like, well, two. He's like, probably four. But they're but they're they're being pansies about it. Like they're not making up their minds. Um. And that's basically what's going on here is he's kind of laying this out like, hey, man, this is what's going to happen. Uh, I like Brad Pitt here, but this is when Frankie really kicks it into overdrive. I think this this is some of his best acting in this entire movie. He does an unbelievable job at just playing like the fear and like, I don't know. What do I do? Do I fuck this person over? Do I not fuck this person over? Uh, you really kind of feel his his plight, you know, like not, not saying he, you know, oh, no, he didn't do anything wrong. He definitely did some shit wrong. You know, but but you can you can kind of at least sympathize with the guy. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. Um, and, and it sucks that you, you kind of really do feel for him, like as he is sort of like backed into this corner. Um, but but man, like like Jackie is just absolutely ice cold, like using Frankie to get to to Squirrel. You know, it's it's a necessity, but it's going to be done. Right. Yeah. And, and he, you know, he tells him straight up. He's like, you know, you think if you went to squirrel and they said squirrel that you were Frankie, he's not going to give you up, which is totally he's totally right. He's manipulating him, but he's right. That's exactly what's going to happen. Um, and uh, he uh, basically cons him uh, or not cons him, but just kind of persuades him into it. You're going to uh, you're going to be with me and uh, we're going to go find him. You know, he says, Jesus, I can't do that. You know, if he sees me, something's going to go wrong. He's going to know something's wrong. Uh, he's like, you know, I tell you what, uh, you just, you know, what is this? So you, uh, so you just made your choice, I guess. Basically it says like, if you're not coming with me, you're, you're fucking dead. Uh, you know, that, that's, what's going to go down. Um, we, uh, we see this great scene of them, um, going into, I guess kind of, I guess going into New York, maybe wherever the fuck that, you know, wherever the fuck that he is. 
Uh, they're hanging out and they're waiting. Uh, I love as they're sitting there, Brad Pitt's like, is that, is that him? He's like, no, it's not him. And then when the car pulls up, he's like, is that him? And the kid doesn't answer him. He goes, that's him. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, that's great. Um, poor Johnny Sack, you know, at least he got some, I guess, right before well, he died. I mean, like, who, who is going to prevent his wife from adding chocolate bars now in secret? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's right. A, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Who is going to go and tell him about Jenny Sack's 95 pound uh, mole getting removed mole, from her ass? You know? Oh my God, dude. I love. I was going to tell her about that. I love how that one joke sparks an entire fucking war. Oh, like, it's so fucking yeah, good. Yeah, it's. Oh, it's good. I don't want to ruin it for anybody. Yeah, but yeah, it gets fucking good. It gets very intense. Just, just off of a joke. Um, he ends up popping uh, squirrel in the guts with a shotgun. Uh, really fucking brutal when he like. So I was dozing off, <laughs> and I Trump. wake up. The double tap. I wake. I wake up, and he's shooting Johnny Sack in the back of the head. I went, "Fuck, man! I gotta finish this movie." Um, yeah, he uh, runs back to the car. I love the little <laughs> real detail. invested, eh? <laughs> yeah, real, real yeah. invested in the stakes. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, well, as I love the detail before he runs off and kills uh, Squirrel that he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, why don't you leave me the, you know, the keys and I'll get a start up, you know, after you kill him. He's like, yeah, I'm going to take the keys with me. Like, I've known a few, right. a few too many people who got a head start, you know, uh, way beforehand. Again, the proficiency uh, of, of Jackie. I really enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, he ends up having to swap him halfway down the. <laughs> the road because the kid can't slow down i guess he's so terrified um and he ends up blowing his brains out uh one to the head and like fucking four to the b- chest like jesus christ yeah. uh really uh, really what's him dead yeah well i mean like expected though right i mean like he, he's the frankie frankie is the reason this all kind of happened right i mean like you know obviously squirrel as well who gave them the job and put him onto it but frankie uh, like, come on, man! Like you, you had to go. <laughs> you had to go. There's, you, there's no. You robbed a mob game. You rob. You robbed the right. mafia. Right. Well, not yeah. Not only that, but like uh, robbed all of the people at the game. That's where right. you end up. Nah. Now you're just being greedy. You know. Right. For, like I mean, before it was business. Now it's personal. You know. Right, right, exactly. You know, you can't just run into a... For, again, the mob game is one thing, but robbing the actual mafia members, like, Jesus Christ, why don't you just fuck his daughter, too, while you're at it? Right. That um, is, like, the ultimate disrespect. Right, yeah, exactly. Um, and I think this is all taking place on the 08 election night, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Uh, as Obama yeah. is yeah, winning is. The, the 08. Uh, the 08 presidency. Um and what do you think about this kind of little monologue? I guess we get from Jackie at the end here. What do you feel? How do you feel about it? Yeah, um, you know what little I know about American history and Thomas Jefferson and all that stuff. Um, you know, Jackie is someone who looks at the American presidential system or the American government or financial institutions as something that doesn't really matter. <laughs> Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. pe- people are gonna be people are gonna do what they're gonna do. People are gonna rob and steal and lie and cheat. Um, you know, no matter who's in charge. And Thomas Jefferson is just someone who lied. Um, basically, he's just someone who you know on the surface made it look like he was doing good, but was actually you know fucking his slave wife or whatever whatever the fuck he says. Um, and I think, you know, Jackie is someone who's seen the underworld. Like he's someone who's seen the most terrible parts of human, human, humanity. And, uh, he's not, you know, he, he's not, um, he's not charmed by it. Like, you know, like, yeah, he's seen the raw unfiltered parts of it. Um, and you know, people like the counselor, people like the counselor have, this sort of like dual identity of like, yes, I'm just doing a job, but like also at the same time, I'm doing a job. Uh, like I know what my clients are asking for and asking Jackie to do. And, um, you know, in the end, when, <laughs> when the counselor gyps, uh, Frankie on his salary or, or payment or rather, you know, he, he knows 
that this is just business. But like Jackie is like, well, of course it is. But like, yeah, I don't know. Like this ending is very, it's a scathing indictment on capitalism in America, I think, and uh, how people go about their money and like how people get paid uh, for for their time and services and rather how management often withholds payment for the people's time and services. Um, <laughs> so, like, you know, it's, it's just... I think this movie doesn't really have an answer, but it just rather brings up the issues. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just like, here, look, these are the issues that right. we have on Spotlight. Dominic's like, I don't really have an answer for this, but these are things that uh, affect everything from you know, fry cooks to mob enforcers. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it's great lines to end on. This guy wants to tell me we're living in a community. Don't make me laugh. I'm living in America and in America, you're on your own. America's not a country. It's a business. Now fucking pay me. Boom. Killing them softly. Um, wow. yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I think the, uh, the final monologue is interesting. Um, you know, I, I like the fact that you, you base you have someone in Jackie who's like I do things that make your world possible. You know the to the counselor, and I think that again the counselor just doesn't want to. You know the counselor has probably probably seen a dead body. You know at some point, but that's about it. You know versus Jackie's seen probably three or four this week. You know he sees dead bodies all the time. See how unflinched he is when there's a murder literally. A, 40 feet behind him crossing the street doesn't even fucking think twice about it anymore. You know, versus the counselor, like you pointed out, can't even handle cigarette smoke. You know, it's, it's so you see the kind of disconnect between their two worlds. And I think that obviously, you know, you have like the counselor who benefits mostly from that, um, from that world, you know, that he's like, Oh yeah, no, the world's, the world's, the world's fine. You know, blah, blah, the world's a good place. And he's like, no, you know, the world where you live is a good place where we live in the real world. It's not, that's not the case. Uh, that's, that's kind of what I took away from it for, for the most part. But, um, I don't think we have really had any list or comments on this one. I don't feel like fucking anybody has seen this movie. Yeah. I think it's incredibly niche. <laughs> I think it's incredibly, it's, it's a niche movie. Uh, Matt Anderson and I were talking about it, I think in one of our posts, because I think, I think someone might have shared the trailer for Blonde, which came out, I think, last week. So, um, oh, yeah. you know, we were talking about Dominic. And, uh, dude, if you are interested in this movie and Dominic's kind of resume, he made a great movie um, called The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward of Robert Ford. By the Coward of oh, Ford. okay. Um, also starring Brad Pitt. Um, yeah, it's got Casey Affleck as well. Dude, shot by Roger Deakins might be one of Roger Deakins' most beautiful movies. And yes, I know Blade Runner exists. Uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine exists. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely, definitely check that out if you haven't seen it. I think um, you know, just kind of like my closing thoughts. I think this is a great pick, man. I you know I didn't appreciate it in twenty twelve for what it was because I was a bit younger. Um, I kind of approached it on a surface level as like a crime mafia mafia movie and like back then i did appreciate the cinematography i think greg fraser greg fraser is fucking awesome man like he's he's way up there into in cinematography like the techniques that he employed on the batman and like renting these old vintage lenses to make the car chase look so different and so much more tactile and wild um and like you know his work on dune i think this movie really really benefits from his cinematography i think this also benefits from the really really tight script um i don't think it is too short i think i think it i think it works for like how small scale this story is you know it's literally just a literally just about a card robbery and then revenge that's it like you know like it's not really yeah i mean like yes you are bringing in themes of like american capitalism and like you know had the state of the world in 2008 um and the, the 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 housing bubble and things like that but like again that's the, that's not like that's just commentary right like it's not the story it's just commentary in the background and you can choose you can choose to pay attention to it if you want to and you can choose to pay uh well you can choose to let that color the characters and their actions uh in this movie if you want to but like you don't have to 
and those are my favorite kinds of movies that can be watched in different ways. So um, I think this movie is an absolute banger. I think, um, oh, man, I think Ben Mendelsohn really, really makes me proud as an Aussie, you know, man. Like he always consistently ends up being some of the best parts of his, the movies, whatever, whatever he's in. Um, I think Brad Pitt's awesome. I think the cast is awesome. It's a great moody crime gangster thriller. Uh, rest in peace, Ray Liotta. Rest in peace, James Gandolfini. Those two are absolute powerhouses in this movie. And uh, yeah, I think this is an awesome movie, man. Yeah, uh, same here. You know, and I think it was actually just about a week ago was like the nine year anniversary when James Gandolfini passed away. Um, I uh, I was really excited to finally. I don't think we've ever talked about him in an episode of this podcast. Almost three hundred episodes, we've never talked about James Gandolfini. Uh, this is definitely somebody we'll be talking about a lot more. Um, I really, really enjoy this movie. I think it's very good. It's close to being great. Uh, but, I, but I feel like it just gets a little murky in some places and some things run a little bit long and other things run a little bit short. Uh, but other than that, I think it's a fine movie. I think it's a really, really, really good movie. It, it, you know, I saw the trailers for this movie. I think it was a little mismarketed for sure. I think there was a little deceptive kind of marketing going on. Uh, but at the same time, if that's what it takes to, I have no idea what the budget was or if this turned a profit or anything. Million. I just, I budget. Yeah. Budget was 15 million and made 37 million. Oh, there you go. That's a, that's a, yeah, it's a yeah. double profit right there. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, all in all, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I was, I was excited to talk about it and talk about just this kind. I love these smaller, you know, kind of like crime films. Like I said, not everything has to be heat or not everything has to be like some kind of heisty shit. You know, sometimes it's just about two guys that rob a card game and have to lamb it, you know, uh, or they end up betraying each other. It's very, it's very interesting. It reminds me of Reservoir Dogs, very small scale kind of like crime thing. Um, but guys, uh, if you've made it to the end of this episode, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to my stuffy ass voice this whole time. Um, Again, if you want to check out any of our stuff, it's going to be at midnightdoublefeature.com. Drop a rate and review us on iTunes. Let us know how we're doing. We appreciate those five stars. It takes five seconds. You give us five stars. It helps us show out tremendously. Uh, it really, really helps out more so than anything when we get those really good reviews. So if you haven't yet and you want to, I consider it a personal favor if you do. I really do appreciate that. Um, you got anything else you want to say before we get out of here, bud? No. Uh, again, like as Colin said, thank you so much for joining us, guys. We really appreciate it. Thank you for uh, supporting the show. Um, we are seeing a big uptick in new listeners um, and our, I guess, download yeah. numbers. So uh, thank you so much. If you are spreading it by word of mouth or whatever you're doing, we really appreciate it. Um, this show hinges on our listeners we have no um, sponsors or advertising, um, so we really appreciate your help wherever you can give it. Hell yeah, guys. Uh, well, thanks again for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Bye. Bye.